This last example encompasses almost all of chapter four into just a couple pages. So it has a lot of things going on. So we'll have to pay really close attention. All right, let's read. The UNESCO um, organization, that's um, a United Nations organization, collects data from countries on their female literacy rate, which is the percentage of women in the country who can read and write, and fertility rates, so the average number of children per woman. The following results come from 112 different countries in 2007. The first few data points and the corresponding scatter diagram are shown below. So I'm not giving you all 112 countries. You're going to have to use the computer output and answer questions. Here's a scatter diagram that shows all 112 countries. And you can see there are a whole, there's a whole clump of countries over here on the right where almost 100% of women are, can read and write. So you can imagine Sweden might be over there, that kind of thing. All right, so that's the female literacy rate, the percentage of women that can read and write, that's the children per woman. That's the scatter diagram. And here's the residual plot, which is the plot of the, the errors off of that residual or that regression line that we see up here. And then down here, I have a mini tab regression analysis. And I've already colored some of these things because we're going to need them a little bit later. But I want you to see up at the top, it says the regression equation is this. It is giving you your y equals, it's not mx plus b, it's actually b plus mx. They kind of do it backwards here. And then we have some information down here that we'll parse apart soon. And then the R squared value right here. Those pieces that I've circled, those are the important parts of this little output. You basically ignore the rest of it unless you're in chapter 14, in which case then it all becomes very important to you. All right, so let's look here. We have female literacy rate is our ex explanatory variable. Explanatory variable is your X, your input, your independent variable. Right. So in our case, that's the female literacy rate. And the fertility rate, which is children per woman, that's your response variable. Okay, so we have those two right there. All right, now what type of variable is the female literacy rate? Well, that is quantitative continuous. If you look back at the numbers that we're using here, there's a lot of decimal places going on here. For our purposes, this is continuous. It's an averaged rate for the whole country, so that's what makes it have so many decimals. And if it's con quantitative continuous, then it's almost always, um, I, well, it's almost always either interval or ratio. And interval would be if you could have negative fertility, or, excuse me, negative female literacy rate, and that's impossible. So that means it has to be ratio. Ratio because you cannot have a negative um, female literacy rate. All right, now, what about the coefficient of determination? That was one of the things that I circled up here. It's right here, R S Q, S Q squared. So this is R squared, and it's 56.4%. Ignore the R squared adjusted thing. That's a whole other type of R squared that we are not dealing with in this course at all. Again, if you were studying chapter 14, that might become interesting to you, but we are not studying that, so we're just gonna ignore it and stick with the regular R squared. So we have 56.4%. All right, now how do we interpret that value? Well, remember there's that formal interpretation language from section 4.3, which is that 56.4% of the variability in the fertility rate of women, that's your Y variable, right? The fertility rate of women from country to country can be explained by that linear regression model or that least squares regression line, that, that line of best fit. So that line that the computer finds, it explains 56.4% of the variability, the up and down of fertility rate that we see from country to country. Note that that means that 43.6% of the variability, we're not really sure why it's happening. It's happening because of a whole variety of factors that our data set is not capturing. All right, now we're supposed to calculate the correlation coefficient. Well, remember that you have R squared. So R is either the positive or the negative square root of that R squared value. So R squared, or excuse me, R is either the positive or the negative square root of 0.564. Make sure you use the decimal here. Don't use the percentage. Convert it to the decimal. And when I use my calculator to do that, which I already did, but I'll do it again, second square root 
0.564, enter, and I get 0.751. So that's where I got plus or minus 0.751. But I have to make a choice. It can't be both positive and negative. It's got to be one or the other. And for this data set, it's definitely the negative one. And you can tell that because, first of all, the slope of the regression model is negative, right? And that means that the scatter plot is negative or has a negative slope to the line. So when you look here, it, this is a negative relationship. You can see you start up at the high end on the left. And then as you move right, you're heading towards the low side. This is a negative slope. And you can also see it right here because slope is the second number right here in the output, your m right there, that second coefficient. And so therefore, the slope is negative because that's a negative number. So either from the scatter plot or from this computer output, you can tell that your slope is negative. Once you know your slope is negative, then you know that your r value has to be negative. All right, and we were just saying this, so what kind of relationship do we see here? Well, we see a negative linear relationship. Again, if your r is negative and your slope is negative, then that's a negative linear relationship. Now, how strong is it? Well, it's moderate, and you can see that one of two ways. You can see that with the correlation coefficient or with the r squared value right here. So let's look at r squared. R squared, remember, we have a list at the beginning of 4.3 that tells us where the strength levels are. Right here, it's this page. So 0.56 is right here between the 0.5 and the 0.6, right in that blue zone of moderate linear. It's also um, discussed right here. It's in that region, so that's moderate. The R value we said was 0.7, so if I go back to 4.1 for a minute, and look here on this page that had the other number line, points, negative 0.75 or whatever it is, is right in here in that moderate negative linear relationship zone. So we have a moderate relationship here, either from the R or from the R squared. Either way, you can tell it has to be, it has to be moderate. All right, now let's look at the residual plot. So the residual plot is the second graph right here. And you're looking for two things. You want to see if there's a horn shape or a definitive non-random pattern. And we don't have either one of those things here. This isn't really a horn shape. It's kind of a little bit all over the place, but that's not a horn shape because there's a whole mess of data over here. So you want, if you want to see a horn shape, you want to look for a definitive cone. And we do not have a cone here. So since we don't have a cone and we don't have a pattern like a big U or a big parabola, then it appears that a linear model is appropriate for this data set. There's no distinctive pattern. There's no distinctive horn or cone shape. So we're fine. It looks basically random up there. And that's what we want. We want a random residual plot. The residual plot um, dots appear, I should say points points appear random, which is good. All right, now what is the linear regression equation? Now the linear regression equation, as they write it, they write it with words in the tab, but I circled it. It's right here. And it says the linear regression, or excuse me, the regression equation is children per woman. Now you have to remember, oh, children per woman, that was my response variable, that's my y, is equal to 6.8 minus 0 0.0487. And the female literacy rate, that was my, or my explanatory variable, that's my x. So this is sort of saying y equals 6.80 minus 0 0.0487 x. And that's what I wrote right here. I say y hat because this is a model, it's not perfect. Y is the actual dots. Y hat is the line, the model. So it's 6.80 minus 0.0487x. And you could write it that way, that's fine. Or you could write it the way you're probably more familiar with, with from algebra class, which is mx plus b. So y is about negative 0.0487x plus 6.8. I'm reversing the roles here. Either way you want to write it is totally fine. All right, now what's the slope? The slope is what's ever multiplied by the x. So here's the slope right here. Here's the slope right here. 
and you can tell it in the computer output because it's right there. It's the part that I circled in red. It's that coefficient for the female literacy rate, right? Because it's the number that's multiplied by your x. Female literacy rate is your x. So when you multiply that as your coefficient by it, it becomes your slope. So that's another way to see it. So your slope is negative 0 0.0487. And I'll interpret that in a second, but I figure I might as well explain what the y-intercept is right now. And that's the number that's the constant, which is 6.8. It has no variable attached to it. So it's 0, 6.8. And you can tell it in the computer output because it's the constant. See, it says constant right next to it. And that's the coefficient for the constant term, which is 6.8. So there's your b. So this is always the way this goes. The constant is your b, and then the x variable will be your m. And that's as far as we're going to go with that. Again, a SATS 2 course would go much further and have you do a whole bunch more variables, but we're only going to do those ones. All right, now that we know what the slope and the y-intercept are, we need to interpret them in the context of the situation. So remember the slope is your rate of change. It's how fast your, what's your y variable, your fertility rate, your children per woman, is affected by your increase in female literacy rate. So what you're saying is every time this line moves one to the right horizontally, what happens to the children per woman vertically? In other words, what's your rise over your run? So we would say every time um, for every, let me, let me type it up one second. All right. For every increase in your x, and you have to explain what your x was. So for every increase in the female literacy rate, that's our explanatory variable in our countries by one. We expect, this doesn't mean it's going to happen, but we expect the fertility rate to decrease because it's negative. So we expect it to decrease by about 0 0.0487 children per woman. And it's very important that you keep your units. So this was percentage for the female literacy rate. This is children per woman for the number or for the fertility rate. All right, now what about the y-intercept? That's saying that a country that has zero um, female literacy rate. So a female literacy rate of zero should expect a fertility rate of about 6.8 children per woman. So let me type that up. There we go. A country with a female literacy rate of 0%, which means no women can read or write in that country, should expect a fertility rate of about 6.8 children per woman. So realize what we're saying. We're saying if you have no women can read or write, they're going to have a lot of children. Now, it's not definitive like that, but that's what we're seeing. That's the trend. And then as we increase the female literacy rate, as more women can read and write in a country, then generally the less children they have. It's not perfect, but that's the general trends we're seeing. All right, now we have the U.S. has a female literacy rate of 99%. What would the model predict is the U.S. fertility rate? So when I tell you that the female literacy rate is 99, I'm giving you x, and then I'm asking you for y. So you're going to substitute 99 into the equation. So let me do that. All right, so we plug 99 in, and when I did that with my calculator, it gave me about 1.98 children per woman. Don't forget to use the little negative symbol down here with the parentheses rather than the big subtraction symbol. All right, now let's find the residual. Residual is what we observe in real life, which is 2.1, take away what we predicted. All right, what we observed was 2.1 right here. What we predicted was 1.98. So when you subtract them, you get a residual of 0.12. And here I drew you a picture right here so you could see what it looks like. Oops, I got the 0 0.12 off there. There we go. So you can see observed is what we um, saw in real life of 2.1, and what we thought it would be was 1.98, and the distance between the two is 0.12. This means that we underestimated the U.S. fertility rate. We thought it would be lower than it actually was. So women in the U.S. have a little bit more children than we expect. Last but not least, Molly has a birth rate of 6.5 children per woman. What's its literacy rate? So that means you have Y 6.5, you plug in 6.5 for Y, and then you solve it for X, and you're going to get 6.16% of women in Molly can read and write. You can see I subtracted 6.8 from both sides. I'll get negative 0.3 here, and then I divided with my calculator right there, and I get 6.16%, which of course is very low, and that would make sense. Mali is a poor country with a high fertility rate and a low female literacy rate.